Hi. Uh, oh, before we start the tour, it'll only take a minute if you don't mind. We've had some severe storms out here. We've really got generally hazardous conditions all along Tornado Alley. And our radio tower at Plains, Kansas is on emergency power. Okay, I'll tell you what. While you're checking the free plans, we'll establish the restoration priorities. Keep us posted. Just keep an eye on this one, please. Thanks for waiting. Sometimes the telephone network can't. You know, keeping the lines clear between more than 170 million telephones and making sure over half a billion local and long distance calls get to their destination every day, well, that's quite a job. And basically, that's what we do here. Welcome to the Network Operations Center, NOC for short, and to AT&T Long Lines headquarters here in Bedminster, New Jersey. Some call this the nerve center of the nationwide telecommunications network, the core network as we telephone people refer to it. Here at the NOC, we have the day-to-day -day responsibility for managing the core network. In other words, it's our job to coordinate and direct the flow of millions of long distance calls every day, to break up and even avert telephone traffic jams, and of course to cope with whatever emergency man or nature may provide. We all keep a close watch on these display panels. A quick glance and we could tell if there are any unusual calling patterns beginning to develop, uh, any facility outages, and what actions we need to take to remedy the situation. For example, take a look at this light over here. It's indicating a hazardous condition. Severe storms and power failures along one of our microwave routes. There's a tornado alert for this area. My counterpart in Kansas City called in with an update on the situation. We were coordinating contingency plans just in case emergency power fails and the storm takes a tower out of service. All the major transmission routes are shown on this map. More than two-thirds of all long-distance calls travel through the air, like this, from microwave tower to microwave tower along the orange routes until they reach their destination. Most all other interstate calls travel underground along coaxial cable routes shown by the green lines or in outer space via communication satellites parked 22,000 miles above the equator. Anytime one of these indicators is lit, it signifies a potential trouble along one of our major transmission paths. And a brief explanation of the situation comes up on this panel. Here we can see the international transmission routes, the undersea cables and satellites that carry our calls to more than 240 foreign countries. NOC to Sacramento? Sacramento. Uh, yes, Sacramento. The traffic between you and Dallas seems unusually heavy. Uh, is there anything particular happening that you're aware of? Now it appears just to be heavy traffic. We'll keep an eye on that situation. Seems as though we have a potential overload between Sacramento and Dallas. Not that it's so unusual for circuits between these two regions to be almost overflowing at this time of day. What he'll do now is check out the options for rerouting the excess traffic. Let me explain. You see, the network is, is programmed like a computer. It uses thousands of sophisticated, intelligent switching machines to provide direct and alternate transmission routes between almost every location in the country. For example, say you place a call from your house to the coast. If the best, most direct route between the two places is at capacity, the network automatically sends the call via the next best route. If that's busy, the next, and so on, and so on. And there may be as many as six or seven different routes the network can use to get a call to its destination automatically. This system of automatic routing has been devised to handle our forecast of average, busy hour calling. But there are times when calling loads between certain locations exceed our forecasts. The automatic routes start to overload and customers begin to hear, I'm sorry, all circuits are busy now. As network managers, it's one of our jobs to do whatever we can to keep that from happening. And so, we override the automated network control system, rerouting traffic around trouble spots or through facilities that are less in demand at that particular moment. 
More often than not, when we intervene and manually balance traffic loads, we divert calls hundreds, even thousands of miles out of their way. But callers never know. Since telephone signals travel almost at the speed of light, it all happens pretty fast. NLC to Sacramento. Sacramento. Sacramento, take your Dallas traffic via Rockdale. What he just did was to reroute the overflow traffic between those two regions through Rockdale, Georgia. We'll have to keep a watch on the situation. As soon as calling starts to pick up again on the East Coast, we'll have to reevaluate our controls if the traffic hasn't let up. We have 10 regional network operation centers around the country and two in Canada. Each one is responsible for keeping watch on the network's performance and calling patterns within a certain geographic region. These regional centers, as they're called, feed information into a master computer. Certain critical data is reflected on the status board and updated as frequently as every 12 seconds. Additional, more detailed information comes in at five minute intervals and not only updates the board, but can also be retrieved and analyzed via these desktop monitors. Systems like these and many others are some of our network management tools. We're constantly in contact with the regional centers, exchanging information, discussing strategies. That's why we're able to effectively coordinate plans to reroute traffic or initiate repairs on facility outages almost like that. This is our international network board. It provides basically the same kind of information as the other display, except of course this one reflects the status of our international circuits and switching machines. These are our seven international switching centers. Though they're called international centers, they are not dedicated to this type of service. They in fact play a dual role because they are integral parts in the domestic network as well. We have some flexibility when working with the international portion of the network, but not to the same extent as we do domestically. We also cooperate with the world organization responsible for the overall coordination of international telephone service to ensure international calls ultimately reach their foreign destinations and to enhance network management capabilities. What I've been describing as rerouting is actually manually reconfiguring the network. And it's something we may do here at the NOC mm, on a quiet day like Saturday, maybe four or five times. But on a busy weekday, if calling traffic becomes unusually heavy, we could do it 50 or 60 times, maybe even more. In addition to rerouting, which is an expansive network control and means we provide additional routes for calls to get through the network, we're also able to implement protective controls, which limit the number of ways a call can be completed. This type of control becomes particularly important in times of emergency. For example, if a tornado does touch down in the Midwest, we'll be able to restrict incoming traffic and maintain essential communication services for the authorities and residents of the stricken area. Such controls also protect other parts of the network by preventing the spread of congestion caused by the emergency. Reconfiguring the network also plays a significant role on special calling days like Christmas and Mother's Day, days when almost everybody wants to use the network at the same time. Whether it's a special calling day, an equipment failure, a natural disaster, or just an unexpected surge in calling, we're prepared at the network operation centers, because that's our job. Planning, analyzing, anticipating, coordinating, doing everything we can to get your long distance calls through this vast thing called the core network without delay. That kind of service, universal telephone service, is almost like a national resource. And believe me, it doesn't just happen. Managing this core network is a 24-hour responsibility. And even though it's AT&T Long Lines that coordinates the overall network management job, it takes a lot more than 12 network operation centers and a handful of experts to keep track of the millions of circuit miles, of transmission paths, and the thousands of switching machines that make it possible to connect virtually every home and office in this country. In the last analysis, it takes people to make it all work. People to program the computers, design the circuits, develop the technology, build the physical plant. Lots of people, 
thousands of Bell System and independent telephone company people alike, working together, planning, committing the necessary resources to make the plans work out, all striving to accomplish the same goal, to provide reliable, affordable, and universally available telephone service. Well, that's about it. Maybe the next time you pick up your phone, you'll think about network management and how it works for you.